So we're looking at the vector equation of lines, and you already know about equations of lines. You know about the Cartesian form of the equation of a line. Cartesian form, y equals mx plus c. And you should know that c is the y-intercept and m is the gradient. So in this example, the c value, is, the y-intercept is 4, and we've gone 1 across and 2 up, so the gradient is 2. We can say that the equation of this line is y equals 2x plus 4. So let's just change this one slightly now, and instead of having x, let's have t. And now what we can imagine it is this is our starting position, and at time 1, it's up 2, and at time 2, it's up another 2 to 8, and at time 2, it's now 3, it's now there, and at time 4, etc, etc, etc. Now, that's enough of Cartesians. Now we're going to look at the vector equation, which is going to feel a little bit similar. So here's our vector equation of a straight line. R with respect to T is equal to A plus TD. Now you should note that A and D are vectors. And you should also note that this looks very, very similar to this. Uh, the T and the D are switched around, and this thing is swapped around with this, and we've got A instead of C. But we do have something and something, and then this bit here, T times something. All right, so they're going to be analogous, and we're going to take a look at how that works. So just like C was our starting position here for, the vector A is going to be our starting position as well. So this stuff really shines in three dimensions, so let's do it in three dimensions. Um, point 0.233 can be talked about with the position vector 2i plus 3j plus 3k. All right, so out 2, across 3, and up 3. And this dot here is going to be our starting position, and it is shown using that position vector. So in this example, we can say that uh, the vector equation, r with respect to t, is equal to 2i plus 3j plus 3k. This is our a value, which is our starting position. And now we just need to say, well, okay, where is our line going to go? So our line might head off, like, in this direction, kind of out of the page, across over here, and upwards a little bit. Maybe it heads in this kind of a direction, here. So maybe it heads off uh, 1 out 3 across and 2 up. So what we're doing is starting at this position vector here and then moving in that direction, moving in that direction um, once every t value, right? So let's take that position vector and multiply it by t in our vector. And so now we've done it, we've got a full vector equation here. And think about it in terms of our Cartesian equation and look at how similar they are. We have a starting position here of 2i plus 3j plus 3k. That's analogous to our starting position here of c. We also have a gradient, if you like, of i plus 3j plus 2k. That kind of lines up here with our gradient. It says this is how steep our line is. This says this is what direction our thing is going to be traveling in. Um, and we're multiplying it by t as we go. This is quite useful because I can use this equation to tell you where my particle is at any time uh, if I just sub in a value for t. So the question might be to find the value of r3. So now we just write our equation subbing in 3 for the letter t. Now I've done that there, and now I just sort of expand it and simplify it, and I'll get a single point. So there we have it, at t3, uh, we have our uh, particle at this place. If we want to be pedantic, we can say that there's a position vector there, but our particle is at this place there. That's a point. Uh, we can also do something a little bit different. We can try to figure out whether point, negative 2, negative 9, negative 5, lies on this vector equation of a line. So the way that we can figure this out is to come up with values for i, j, and k and equate them to our i, j, and k components. Because what we're really saying is that there's some vector, some position vector, equal to negative 2i, negative 9j, negative 5k that lies on this line. So by expanding our brackets a little bit over here, we can see that it's going to be uh, 2i plus ti, so that's the same as 2 plus ti, and then it's going to be 3j plus um, t3j, or 3tj, 
which is the same as 3 plus 3TJ. And then it's going to be 3K plus 2TK, which is the same as... Okay, so now we have this, which is just this rewritten in a slightly different way with the I component, the J component, and the K component put together. Now we can say that, well, we need the I component to be negative 2, we need the J component to be negative 9, and we need the uh, K component to be negative 5, all at the same T value. So this equals this, this equals this, and this equals this. And so when I solve each of those in turn, I'll get t equals negative 4. Here I would get, um, let's hope, t equals negative 4. And here I would get t equals negative 4. Just rearrange, 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 year 9 stuff. Okay, that says that at time negative 4, all of these things are true. The I component is negative 2, the J component is negative 9, and the K component is negative 5. Therefore, that point does lie on this line. Now, I just want to head back to talking about this vector equation for a second and really formalizing this bit just a little further. So you've got some three-dimensional space here, and you've got a line moving through that three-dimensional space in some way, and you want a vector equation. Now, I talked about like a starting position, and I gave you a starting position. Any point on this line can be treated as our starting position. So this point, this point, this point, they'd all be good candidates for a starting position. And as long as you know this vector, or this vector, or this vector in terms of its i, j, and k components, you can put those in as your a value. Now moving over to here, what we sort of talked about with our Cartesian as being our, our gradient, it's a vector parallel to this line, right? So it doesn't matter what vector you use as long as it's parallel to that line, which means that you could use a vector that was, say, this long, or a vector that was this long, or a vector that was this long. And remember, vectors don't have position, so as long as it was moving in the same direction in terms of its i, j, and k components, it's not sitting on the line, it's just parallel to the line. All of this means that we can use an infinite number of starting positions along our line, we can use an infinite number of vectors parallel to the line to create this vector equation, which means that we can have multiple vector equations to talk about a single line. So another question here, you could be asked, uh, find the vector equation of line AB, so a line passing through points AB, where points AB are this three dimensions and this three dimensions. And so I get the sense my drawing is getting worse, but one across, uh, one up, one across, and negative two down, and um, two out, one back, and one down. And we're looking for the line that passes through both of those points. Okay, we need a starting position, any point on the line, and we need a vector parallel to that line. Um, now, this was point A, and this is point B. So we need a vector parallel to the line, and we need a vector, a position vector on the line. Now, I don't care which one we choose. We could choose uh, vector A, we could choose vector B. I'm just going to choose vector A here, my position vector. So my starting position for this vector equation is going to be i plus j minus 2k. That is my a value. Obviously, you don't have to do that here. I'm just showing you. And secondly, I need my plus t, and then I need my vector parallel to the line. Now, how am I going to find my vector parallel to the line? Well, I need to find vector ab. And you'll remember that vector ab is equal to ao plus ob. Uh, now, uh, vector OB is simple enough. Uh, it's just simply uh, 2i minus j minus k. But vector AO is the reverse of this. It's moving in the other direction. So it's not 1, it's negative 1. It's not j, it's not 1, it's negative 1. And it's not negative 2, it's positive 2. And I'm adding those vectors together to get my single a, B vector. And now that I have my A, B vector, I can put it back into this equation, and I get this here. 
All right, I have a vector equation of line AB, a vector equation. So really, um, I could have done this in a number of ways. I didn't have to use I plus J minus 2K as my starting position. I could have used this, 2I minus J minus K as my starting position. I didn't need to use vector AB here. I could have used the reverse. I could have used vector BA. We can reverse this vector, and that would have worked as well. Um, I could have come up with some other third position vector by doing something ridiculous, but these are those were sort of the two methods that I could have used. Uh, but a starting position, any point on the line, that's what that was, and a vector parallel to the line, that's what that is. Now, as usual, these vector equation questions can be asked in any number of ways, and you can be given bits of information and not given other bits of information. Maybe there's a k value missing and they tell you the equation, whatever it might be. But as long as you remember these relationships and you put in what you know and what you can find, then smooth sailing.